floor doing their thing. That's life, you know? That's life that obviously they can't crush, you know? And if they can't crush it, we can win, you know, no matter how difficult they are. So with that, you know, I, I encourage you. I encourage you, just like Kevin did in the beginning. There are points where you move into a space of uncomfortability. It's okay. Revolution does not happen unless you move into that space. Individually, as a person, as communities, then as country and as a world. That's what this shaking up this world is about. We're going to move in that space so that we can begin to create the kind of worlds plural, that we know and desire that there's real freedom there for all living creatures. For all living creatures, there's freedom there. So I, I commend you, I mean, I really do. And I say carry on what you're doing, look at your challenges, try to deal with some of them challenges before they do, all right? And just keep on. I want to take this message back to some of the political prisoners who I'm in touch with to let them know. I'll let them know even about the crazy music, you know, and that scene too, you know, because probably a lot like me was like, man, they are just crazy. <laughs> but we forget that we were them crazy ones back in the 60s with the big afros and the crazy dancing and all that stuff too. We were them too. So there's something in there that is quite revolutionary, quite profound, and you should just continue it. Right, thank you. Right, listen, you got other speakers here, right? who are very good. But if you do have, and they are, I mean, I sh I'll take a few, but you got speakers and you want to use that time with them to the max. I've got a couple. Uh, um, the first one would be, you, you mentioned a couple times the, the difference is like organizing with other groups um, to diversify, to, to unify. You said we have a lot of challenges that we should uh, directly uh, look at right now. Is there, do you have any, like, could you, like, for example, the, you know, in terms of dealing with racism, we know we're fighting racism in this society in general, but we're all affected by racism. We all internalize it. You know, what, what that might be for me is, is going to be one way that is internalized for you, it may be different, but the, the, one of the challenges for us to at least be aware of that and begin now to figure out ways that we can begin to deal with that. Can we get rid of racism within us in our lifetime? Probably not, right? But we can work on it to manageable levels so that we can build communities, you know, rich communities, some, a lot of times mixed communities, you know, but to be able to build movements from them that gives us a way to work together that has the kind of respect, you know, uh, that all of us need to, to just move forward. Uh, our, I'm part of critical resistance. Our office was just attacked um, November 16th. And, um, and, it, and it was attacked because we was holding an Anarchist People of Color fundraising party. And so Brooklyn Swinus comes to the office and they, and they attacked because they said somebody was on the um, sidewalk drinking out of an open container. But how does um, 20 cars come within two minutes? you know, after we told them they couldn't come in the office, you know. Um, when we put out a call for aid after that, so many people came to help us. White activists, uh, the Latino community activists, and everybody came. But, you know, what was good about, and, and this is still ongoing, is that in the beginning, we knew that everybody has to be mindful of things that have divided us in the past, you know. So when white groups come, we, you know, we make it, you know, we make that discussion happen right away. You know, be mindful, you know, that you can do this, that you have done that, you know, be mindful. That sometimes, you know, when the, when the white men get up speaking and stuff, they shut down everybody, not just 
the white women and everybody, but it's shut down everybody because we got so much stuff we're dealing with. You know, but we also deal with very mindful of sexism. So in our stuff, we try to be very conscious of them from the beginning. We want people to know that this is a people of color space. So we're gonna take the lead on this. You know, we're asking you for your support. But we try to do it in the beginning, you know, no matter how difficult it is. And I think what's good about the way we're doing it is that not only do people have the skills to do it, but people have the heart to do it. And I say the heart in this, in this sense, I'm talking about the compassion to know that it's going to be difficult for people. So let's be ready for the difficulties and, and how can we create community? Because community is a much better thing with dealing with this, these kinds of struggles in strict political organizations. So we're trying to do a lot of this from a sense of community to help people to be able to move from one difficult phase to something that is, you know, a, a more productive phase. What would be your steps to bring a community like Erie, which is, just to say, just the easiest part of racism in its own self, bring it together so that the people can work together? What would be some of your... Well, not, not being from Erie, but, you know, uh, since I came yesterday, I've been, you know, I had asked several people, uh, what's the percentage of black folks? And it has ranged from 15% uh, to 50%, you know. So whatever it is, right, there is a black community, you know. And even though, in talking with one of the sisters here who, who has a newsletter, The Underground, you know, even for um, tools like that to be used to, like, to be able to not only get out information, but to get information back from other folks in the black community to get a sense on where people are at with 